Would you like to come to my aunt's house for Christmas this year? Are you kidding me? I'd love to. Chris and I had been dating for a year. A relationship had been fast-tracked, and I had already moved into his house, but had yet to meet his family. He chose the annual Christmas brunch to introduce me, so I could witness his family's quirks, all under the mistletoe. But you see, my birthday's on Christmas, so for as long as I can remember, I have avoided the stupid hoopla that comes with this holiday, usually finding myself belly up at the bar with the other orphans, alcoholics, and ghosts of Christmas past. But this year was different. I truly love this man and wanted our relationship to hold value and longevity. I had been invited to Aunt Dobbsy's and I was giddy. She was the waspy aunt with a historic house in Coronado. You know the ones I'm talking about. It had a plaque on it commemorating the year it was built. <laughs> and the brave sea captain who had lived in it first. She had somehow adopted a cute nickname like other waspy women her age do. I think she earned it after Cotillion, and it stuck. I secretly wanted to go to a Christmas like this my whole life. There would be crystal punch bowls filled with pink champagne and a Christmas tree dripping with gold. I was sure of it. Chris gave me specific instructions. A list of the who's who was presented, and I studied. Dobbsy was married to John, a retired helicopter pilot who snuck rum in all of his drinks. There was Martha, Chris's mom and Dobbsy's sister, who everyone suspected was a lesbian because she never remarried after her husband's death. Chris's older brothers, Roger and Michael, who tortured him as a child. There was a secret Santa every year, one gift per adult, and who you purchased a gift for was sent in a covert email. Chris and I were conveniently given each other. It took away all the secrecy, but avoided me embarrassing myself for buying Dobbsy the wrong colored pashmina. <laughs> I was asked to cover my tattoos and to bring a sweet potato casserole, <laughs> but one without marshmallows, <laughs> because marshmallows are trashy. Another frantic email went out asking who would be making the gravy that year and that a proper gravy was not made with cream. What did it all mean? <laughs> These were the family traditions I had seen in movies. The great gatherings around the family's matriarch with offerings of pie and white wine. I relished in the preparation of it all. Would this be the year a rich white family finally adopted little brown me? <laughs> <clears throat> when I awoke that Christmas morning, I felt an excitement I had long since forgotten. I prepared myself for the day. I made sure my dress was pretty, not too low cut. A matching cardigan covered my hooligan tattoos. I even bought pantyhose. I had prepared the perfect sweet potato casserole that was swimming in class and had never even heard of a marshmallow. My gift for Chris was thoughtful. A rugged, gray, nubby wool sweater was wrapped waiting by the door. I was going to nail this thing. Are you nervous? Chris asked as we drove over the Coronado Bridge. My palms were sweaty. No, this will be fun. We parked and pulled up to the house, and I gasped. This was some ritzy shit. <laughs> The tasteful tiny white lights and perfectly manicured hedges had Sunset Magazine written all over them. Grabbing our packages, we fumbled to the door. I was going to smile my way through this day, and everyone was going to love me. Our presents were tucked under the tree. My offering of sweet potato casserole was stowed in the oven to keep warm. I found a glass of Chardonnay in my hand, and we were pushed into the kitchen to finish preparing the meal and mingle. Aunt Dobbsy and Martha were the first to corner me. So, how did you guys meet? <laughs> oh, we were set up on a blind date on Valentine's Day, I answered sweetly. And you live at his house already. <laughs> um, yeah, he asked me to move in and I said yes. Where do you work? I got laid off. Um, I'm looking. I'm, I'm currently between jobs. Then I got it. 
the cold look of judgment. Chris's previous girlfriend had been attending the same family function for over five years. Hell, she wasn't even a girlfriend. She was his fiance. She was the one Martha and Dobbsy wanted to drink white wine with. She was currently attending nursing school and had left Chris the previous year for his best friend. This was a sore subject. <laughs> the ring had been returned, and the family surrendered the fantasy of having Chris married and taken care of. And I stroll in. The newbie. The unemployed little chippy whose pantyhose itched and was not the package they expected. You guys sure move fast. Have you met Chris's ex? You know, I think she's in her last semester of nursing school. I wanted more wine, but I was instructed by Chris to only have one glass. He eyed me from across the room and smiled, completely clueless. I was floundering and there was no relief. And that's when Dobbsy snapped. You know, if you break his heart, I will kill you. <laughs> well, that's one way to start a family tradition, kill the new girlfriend and bury her in the backyard next to the prized roses. You see, Chris was the baby, the youngest brother, their little troublemaker. Although at this point, well into his 30s, he was the boy they had all looked out for. They had seen him through broken bones and little league and a cheating fiance, and there I stood the wanton hussy, a leech, the weirdo. I'm sure in their eyes they believed I had latched onto Chris, finding myself a juicy meal ticket. They could see I didn't fit in. They could smell it on me. I was lousy with it. I'll take good care of him, I promised. We all laughed off the threat, but for <coughs> Christ fucking sake, I, my life was in danger and brunch hadn't even started yet. Surely a few slices of spiral ham and some creamy pearled onions would quench on Dobbsy's bloodlust. I simply had to smile my way through brunch, make it past gift exchange. After we finished eating, we gathered around the tree. This family did not skip a beat. This was a well-organized and methodical Christmas morning. They meant business. Uncle John assumed responsibility of present disbursement. Santa Cap, officially perched on his bald head. Aunt Dobbsy was on trash detail, making sure each scrap of foiled paper and colored ribbon quickly found its way into the thick black hefty bag. I proudly waited for Chris to open his gift. A traditional Irish fisherman sweater. It was gray and wool and nubby and had a button placket on the collar. <laughs> This was a goddamn sexy looking sweater. <laughs> if this sweater was a man, I would do bad, naughty things to it. Chris was going to love it. His mom and Dobbsy paused to watch him unwrap his gift. This was my final test. The mission almost complete. He opened the box and lifted the sweater, holding it against his chest. It's the standard move you make when anyone buys you a sweater for Christmas. Oh, a sweater. That's nice, Dobbsy commented. Was that condescension I heard? It was. But who could be sure? At this point, I was paranoid. I calculated the minutes it would take to say our goodbyes and scurry home. It's your turn, Chris smiled at me, grabbed a box from under the tree. He placed it on my lap. It was heavy. I unwrapped the paper and opened the lid, pushed aside styrofoam packing peanuts. Whatever was in the box stared back at me and grinned. Buried under packing peanuts was a mounted taxidermy bobcat head. <laughs> this was not an elegant, well-executed, noble representation of a bobcat. This bobcat looked as though it had been stuffed by a person on methamphetamines. <laughs> it grinned, its eyes yellow and wonky. Hell, this bobcat looked as though it was on methamphetamines. As I pulled it out, I imagined the scene in Seven where Brad Pitt opens the box containing his wife's head. <laughs> oh my God, Dobbsy cried grasping her hand to her chest. 
What on earth is that? <laughs> it's a bobcat head, Chris exclaimed. Suzanne collects these things. He gave me a look of pure mischief. He was loving this moment. <laughs> the little boy, forever the prankster, forever trying to make his family feel uncomfortable. When all I wanted was their approval. Why had I covered up my tattoos? Why was I so concerned? And more importantly, why did my sweet potato casserole not have marshmallows? This was all bullshit. Chris knew me and he knew I'd love this ugly thing. I packed it up back, I packed it up in its crime scene box and grinned like a deranged stuffed beast. Chris was one sweater richer and I had earned the most bizarre Christmas gift ever. It took forever saying our goodbyes, but I had made it out alive. I would always be dubbed the weirdo girlfriend and Chris forever the little imp. I could live with that. Heading back over the bridge, Chris replied, well, that went really well, don't you think? <laughs> it did go well, I nodded. Will you buy me a drink? Absolutely. Happy birthday, sugar. Suzanne Hoyams!